This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with Violent Gentleman. Um, we're back with a honey badger, Eddie Tracy. How are you, mate? All oh, good, Stephen. How are you, bud? Um, I was saying the the Keen Doyle obviously had him on yesterday. Um, but obviously the sentiment has sort of come down. You know, we're we're a week past cut the class twelve now. And there's I know the shows and the TV this weekend, but it's not nice being a being a fan sitting on a couch watching it. You'd rather be there and experiencing it. So. I think of what three, three, just over three weeks now. The next show in, in Belfast, so haven't they survived for a few weeks? Yeah, you should be okay. Should be hopefully as long as I've, I've loads of you guys coming on for interviews. It will keep me in the in the the right mindset, sort of, and keep me in the fighters' mindset and getting ready for fights and excitement rather than sitting going, what am I going to do today? You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But obviously for yourself, uh, twenty three months without a fight. Do you, do you actually feel like you're a fighter again? It does, yeah. And I was explaining that to um, to Johnny or Kieran. I think, uh, in one of the interviews after the fight. Like, it didn't feel real. It arrived into the fight week, knowing that you put in the camp. Obviously, with, with two years out of the ring, it was, uh, it was a long time. But getting to the fight week, standing on the scales, making way, just sort of felt real then, you know? And and like I don't know when I walked into the the, the way in last Friday, you and your missus were sitting in the chairs. You you thought you were waiting for food. You know you were just so relaxed and you were out of the way for everybody. And it didn't take me too long to find you. Um, but like I don't know, maybe obviously getting a wee bit older and things like that. You just seem so relaxed and everything's so easy going. It's like I guess COVID sort of made us realise that we just have to relax and take it easy. What's going to happen is going to happen. 100%. Uh, even mm-hmm. when I got up to the Devonish last week, um, obviously making way on fight week, I made it all about it, but uh, getting up to the, driving up, I was grand, but getting, as soon as I walked into the Devonish and uh, knew where I was, like, just, it's like I got a, a burst of energy. And, like, mm-hmm. I could, like I could in and fight four rounds then, you know? I knew I was about to weigh in um, and I just got a, a burst of energy and just felt happy and like you said, I was nice and relaxed and uh, ready to stand on the scales and make way. It definitely wasn't. It was obviously, I know, I know it was like, you know, the last time you were there was the last time we were there, you know, because we missed, we missed the, the card in February before the lockdown, because obviously the, the MTK show, show was on the same night. So it was our first time sort of being back in the venue as well as yourself. So it, it was good to be back, obviously, in the day of Nish as well. Yeah, you know, it was a cracking venue too. Love the venue. Obviously, the, the fact that, it, you know, I would say probably at times last week, the noise was really, really there. You know, you could still, like your lot at st- stages there beside me when I was filming the fights and I was going, I'm, I'm going to have to tell some of these ones to, ca- to calm down a wee bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. But even like I was ex- explaining to one of the lads, like it didn't feel that it was a limited capacity. Mm. Like the noise, I think it was more so from uh, all my mates. It didn't feel like there was uh, less people in there at all. It felt like it was full capacity, just like a normal, uh, any other normal night, you know? Mm. And I definitely met uh, Senior Tracy uh, on Saturday night as well. I was, I was outside having a having a smoke and, and your dad approached me and um, I didn't know who he was and he was like, I'm Eddie's dad. And I was like, how's it going? You know, so I met, I met another one of the family. So I met your missus and obviously met your dad on the same night. But um, I'm sure they enjoyed being back as well at the boxing. Yeah, they were loving it, yeah. My old lad loves the boxing. So uh, it was a nice... Um, after two years, it was a nice uh, night for everyone, you know. It's a good buzz at, at the at the fights anyway, so everyone enjoys themselves. Definitely, isn't it? When you bring drink involved and singing and shouting, it, it just adds yeah. it up another few decibels. Especially not after not having it for so long over COVID, you know. But uh, mm. now everyone enjoys themselves 100%. Definitely, isn't it? I'm sure you're sort of glad now. Like, obviously, I've seen your Instagram nearly on a daily basis. You know, it was, well, you know, it wasn't the old saying, whilst they sleep, we train. You know, you were out at four o'clock in the morning, um, obviously run, running everywhere. You know, you must have been running with Mo Farah, you know, at stages you were you were everywhere running. Um, yeah. But was there a particular reason why you were out training at that time in the morning, obviously with your work and everything else? Why were you out, why were you going out running at four in the morning? Yeah, see, I start, see, I work, I work full time. So mm-hmm. I start in the summer, um, I work six, six, uh, I start working six a.m. So in order to get two sessions in a day, I need to get up early and run. So I had to get up at four o'clock. Uh, I don't have to. You could have done it in the evening, but I just, I like to get into that, uh, uh, 
mind, no frame of mind that I have to, you know what I mean? I don't want to do that. I don't want to get out of bed at four o'clock and go running, but it mm-hmm. has to be done. It's, uh, it's you do what needs to be done, basically, you know what I mean? So in order to get two sessions in a day, I had to get up, do my road work in the mornings, and then go to work, do my day's work, and then go back at boxing in in the evening, you know? Puff, like, it takes up, like, you have to build a uh, uh, balance your work and your family and everything and your training and aim, but for that feeling, walking out to the crowd and getting in there and fighting in front of the crowd, it all uh, makes a world well in the end, you know? It's it's one of them things that I say, it's training, training your mind, obviously, as they say, sometimes your mind can be more stronger by doing things, you tell, you know, get up at half three to go out for a run. The old saying was you sort of get milk and eggs. Remember the old thing where it was like the old training thing where you weren't a warrior if you didn't like crack eggs in the cup and, and drink them and things like that, you know, but it's them wee things in your mind that you get out and run at time of the morning. It wakes you up, it gets your metabolism moving and then you're ready to do your day's work. Exactly. And I take that into my fight, exact on the fight on the the night of the fight as well. Like I put it, it's in my head constantly that like I'm I'm getting out of bed at four o'clock in the morning to go run. I'm putting in ten weeks of hardship, putting my body through hell, you know, putting bleeding in the gym for it, you know, getting my body beat up, beating my own body up. And uh, it's in my head constantly that I'm at the doing all that stuff to me, I said so I'm gonna be hard to beat in the ring, you know. Mm-hmm. That's constantly in my head, so that's why I always think about that all the time. There's no way that I'm, I'm putting in all that work for me to lose tonight. And it's it's what is it they say? I'm, I'm coming out with all these sayings today. It's hard hard work well, always beats talent. Right? You like Shakespeare, yeah, Stephen. <laughs> I don't know what I must have been swallowing a meme book or something last night. Um, you know, or, or memes or whatever they're called. I I don't know what what they are. I'm, I'm getting too old for the, the new school sort of way of, of things <laughs> online. Um, having to keep up with everything, you know. Um, yeah. But but with 23 months out of the ring, you know, as well, like, were you having to put in the extra training? Um, did they lose weight you put on over lockdown and things like that? Or how did you find the training coming back into fighting again? See, the training side of things isn't really, like, I'm always training, so the training side of things isn't really, like, obviously, if you have a day, it, it, everything gets easier. Um, mm. But I'm always taking over in the gym. Um, obviously, I had to lose a bit of weight, but I don't. I don't really go too too heavy, you know. Mm. It's always manageable that I can do it, like within six, eight weeks or whatever. Like, but uh, I think with this camp, um, I was more not to, with with not fighting in two years. I was more determined. Like I trained hard for every fight, but with two years out of the ring, I was more excited um, to, to be back in camp, basically. Mm. And just everything just came easy. Um, the training sort of things, the weight sort of fell off. Not that it, like it wasn't uh, difficult, it was very difficult, but it came off a lot easier than previous camps, if you get me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, but I think it was more, more, more so excitement than uh, than anything else, just to be back in camp in that uh, frame of mind, you know? Was it like making your debut again, sort of? That's basically what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then butterflies in the belly, and it's like, I'm going to yeah. get and punch someone, you know, and it's, it's like you getting hit in the face for the first time, you're going, I love this, hit me again, hit yeah. me again. Yeah, I love, I love getting a punch in the face. Just wake you up. That's what I was calling the, the guy on in the fight on Saturday there just to go toe-to-toe for, for a few seconds, you know? I remember, I think it was at a stage was it in the fourth round where you started walking off and you were going, come and stand here, come and stand here. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. Um, excited. Uh, I love it. I love toe-to-toe. Just, I love going to war, but uh, sometimes you have to box as well, but now nah, for a few seconds I don't mind going toe-to-toe either, you know? As long as you're not getting hit and you're the one doing the damage. Well, you're gonna get hit. It's boxing, you know what I mean? You fall out of the ball, mm. you're gonna get wet, Steve. But uh, <laughs> no, I don't mind. I don't mind getting, like I said before to you, I don't mind landing or taking two to land one, or you know, because I know when I'm gonna land, it's gonna hurt. There's you coming out with inspirational quotes as well now as well. I'm I'm rubbing yeah, off on you today. There you have it. <laughs> and and how you just sort of you know like I know when any time you have a fight and you know the week after, how is it? You know, are you just of that urge? You want to go again now? Is is that back in? Is that you know? Is that fires in the belly the week after you're going? I'm going to take it easy with food because I don't know when I might have a fight again and everything else. But is that where you're like, give me another fight, give me another fight? Yeah, well, there's talks. There's talks of a show now in Dublin in November. I think mm-hmm. end of November from sometime. Um, so obviously, you know, that's in your in your head that you can't go too mad. 
Um, obviously, take a week. I took a week off training because I'm I'm busy with working that things like that. But uh, over put it off due to being in camp. But um, yeah, it's in your head. Obviously, like you can take it easy a bit for a few days, and then I'm gonna go for a run tonight. Obviously, I haven't trained the last couple of days, but I'm gonna go for a good run tonight, and then back into camp Monday, hoping to get another fight by the uh, the end of November in Dublin. But that's you know, you're, 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 I think everybody in the stables probably end up cutting class 13. Um, you know, I, I guess it depends on, on what stipulations things are set by, by the South in terms of boxing. You know, be the first show in what, over two years. First, last show it was obviously in, in Dublin, you were on that as well. It was in July 2019, was it? That was um, no, that was the one in Cork. There was one in the last show in Dublin, I think, was March, March. 2019. That was the one in the stadium. Um, yeah. But they had one in Cork. Uh, a few of the boxing Ireland guys when I was on it. Um, it was toy boxing. Martin Horgan ran the, the, the show and the guys co promoted with him. Um, it was toy boxing on during the day and then pro boxing on later on that night. So it was a great show now. Mm. But I think that's the plan for maybe November or something similar. But we'll see what happens anyway. Definitely was, and, and sort of look at, looking at your fight last week, you fought, um, I would probably say a tough coalition in Dario Borosa. I'm, I'm nearly struggling to say the names, I'm struggling with names with everybody at the moment. So, yeah, Dario, Dario Borosa, Borosa yeah. and you won in points 40 36. What did you sort of think of the performance? You know, was it just the fact of easing yourself back in, or have you what? Because obviously, you know, I recorded the fight, so you, you maybe watched it back already. Have you sort of had a good look at it? Yeah, I have, yeah, and much appreciated for recording the fights because I wanted, I was saying to me dad and me missus, I said, make sure you get a, a video of it. So I had all them video video on for me so I can mm. watch it back, but then I found out afterwards that you recorded it, so much appreciated. But uh, yeah, it was a good fight. Um, I planned, the whole time it was planned to go for the, for the distance. Um, wanted to get four rounds in, obviously due to being out of the ring for so long. Um, wanted to get the rounds in. Get, um, but I felt like, I wanted to box more, like I didn't want to get him out of there. Like I caught him one or two shots, and uh, I just went back on the jab. And I caught him one or two hard shots, and just went back on the jab just to get the rounds in. Um, basically didn't come out of first or second gear. You know, I just wanted to just get the rounds in, work on me boxing a bit more, and that's what we doing. The coach was happy with my performance, so uh, a few things like I look back and think so I could have done a bit better on the inside, or but uh, I was just enjoying the fight. Just what like I could have went another. Four rounds, five rounds, easy, you know. Mm. And sometimes it's just like it's it's doing the wee basic things because everybody knows you can punch, you know. So exactly. every, everybody knows you can bang, you know. You you two knock out in your previous four fights, and you I think you dropped the guy in another one as well. So there was there was knock out in three of your first four fights. So at least when you take, you know, when you don't sort of put the foot in the gas, you can show you have different things to your game rather than a puncher. 100%. That's, that was the plan the whole time, just to work on the boxing. Me and my coach, Mark and Jeff, uh, we've been working on the pads, working on boxing, everything, just keeping things simple. Working off the jab, everything behind the jab, picking nice, picking the shots, waiting for the openings. Um, and I plan to bring that going forward again, um, boxing, because you, you ask any boxer, when they go looking for the knockout or they're constantly trying to get the knockout, it doesn't come. Like, let everything flow and uh, the knockouts will come, you know, the knockout will present itself. We're just trying to stick to the boxing. Like, it, it, I, I, everyone knows I can punch, like, but it's not about that. Like, I, I wanted to get the four rounds in and then just work on the boxing. And then if the punches present themselves for the knockout, I'll take them. But just the plan is to, to work on the boxing now going forward. Fantastic. So it's sort of easing the hands a wee bit. You don't want to have, obviously, broken hands from, from hurting people too much. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, obviously, the... You know, you you've already been mandated before for the BEA Kelly title before the sort of pandemic kicked in. Um, obviously, one of the rumor opponents, the worthy face Dominic Donegan, sort of going through a bit of a tough time at the minute with boxing. And I know sometimes in sport, um, there's a bit of rivalry and things like that. But you know, I think it's Dominic obviously fought in an exhibition last week. But I'm sort of saying to him, you know, he's probably he's had his first career defeat now, and now he's sort of going. Where am I at in boxing? You know, I'm a forward fighter, I'm a backwards fighter. He's sort of stuck between two, but but obviously that was a fight. It was rumored Graham McCormick's back in action. Is and he's fighting again. Obviously next month, um, probably the same week as yourself. He'll be fighting over in Scotland. Um, other ones, and obviously it, it's it's pretty much super welter class. I mean, you've obviously Owen O'Neill and Danny Keaton. 
obviously, um, as well as obviously your former opponent Owen Duffy and and Christian Preston and Paul Ryan as well. So, like, are you still the sort of front runner with the BA for the belt? What's sort of going on with it? I think so. Yeah, I think I'm like I'm mandatory for the Kelly Toyd at Super Welder. So, like, hopefully get that in my next fight. Who it's against now, I don't know. Um, but. I want to fight for that title next. Hopefully now there's talks of um, maybe like a small tournament thing. I don't know if it's going to happen now or not, but I'd like to fight for that title in my next fight. Hopefully get it for Dublin. If the lads can get over the line, I know things are proving difficult with um, COVID and uh, the current climate, but hopefully now the Celtic title for the next fight. And like if you were to have a fight in Dublin as well, you're going to sell quite a lot of tickets as well. So it makes sense. The, you know, if you're going to be selling a lot of tickets, you need to have a good fight. Exactly. A Kelly, like if I'm fighting for a Celtic title in Dublin, I reckon two or three hundred tickets easy. If, if it's full capacity and I'm allowed to have that many tickets and um, the venue can cater for it, absolutely, I'll sell 200, 300 tickets. See, it's difficult for people to come up, like the likes of Belfast. Because you've only limited tickets and then people have to come up, like people have to sort hotels, taxis, uh, babysitters, everything else that goes with it. Mm-hmm. So it's, you can't expect people to to be coming up but like the likes of Dublin Dublin's only and I think it's in Tallis which they're talking about Tallis 20 minutes away from mm-hmm. my house from my town Bray so um, I will do it if I get if it's full capacity and I get um, a lot of tickets I'll do I'll sell a lot of tickets for 100% there'll be and some noise in there would, would you be you'd be the only male fighter in Bray obviously or probably our most famous fighter from Bray is obviously Katie Taylor so you're pretty much for men's pro boxing. You're the figurehead, but obviously you have a really tough one. We well, I guess for Katie, I guess a lot of people would have to go away to America or, or Manchester or London to go and see her fight. So it's probably the closest they have of like a of a local hero sort of for boxing. You know, with Katie being away a lot. So like you know, for them, obviously you're really the only pro boxer in Bray. There's a certain aspect, you know, because Katie's always away. But for, for so for them, obviously, it's one occasion to get out, you know, give them a show in Dublin, fill the buses, you know, make sure somebody stays behind to close the door sort of thing, you know, and the rest of, the rest of Bray leaves. Yeah, 100%. Um, that's what I like. Well, obviously, my sparring partner and my good friend, James Carl, he's from Bray as well. He's gone. He's torn pro now. Mm-hmm. I think he's planning to make his... Uh, well, he, he's had two fights already, but then he... He's he, um, he not boxing now. Now he's coming back. So I think he's planned to be on Dublin show as well, which is good. Um, so we have him there as well. But it's great. Uh, Regan Buckley, we were trying to bar he's amateur. He was he was pro for he had two pro fights. Um then he uh, went back amateur, he'd done well in the European games. Mm-hmm. But it's great um boxers and obviously Katie Taylor um as well. So but like you said, I have great support from Bray. Um they really do get behind me. I'm very grateful for every last one of them to do and um, get behind me. So, if there is a show in Dublin, we will to be uh, bus loads of people coming. And and I guess what you know probably not so much as probably put on the Bray. Um, you know, it was having such a talent as Katie's, um, as Katie's accomplishments. Obviously, in not only amateur boxing, you know, Olympic gold medalist, and obviously what two weight. Five Beautiful. time world champion with a class as is four of one and one from another. Um, how how is Bray obviously as, as a town for boxing at the moment? Well, here's a good one for you, Stephen. Like our club, St. Trey's Boxing Club, where I train out of, we had a premises, um, and then, then the council took it back or whatever it was. Don't know what the problem was, but we're currently homeless as a club. Mm-hmm. We have, like, here's a good one. I done 10 week camp for my last fight. Train out my coach's back garden mm-hmm. in the rain, train in my own back garden and in the local park and bride, the people's park. So that's I done a 10 week camp training there. Now we have use of a community center up the top end of Bray in Wolf's Home. We have use of that two um, nights a week, but it's only floor space. There's no place for the ring, there's no place for a bag. There's a, it's only basically literally for floor space. So we are currently looking for a place. So if any councillors or any pl- person in Bray or close boy has a premises and are willing to, we're willing to pay rent on it. Like mm-hmm. just, we seem to be falling on deaf ears. No one wants to help us. Um, I don't know why, like it's a community club. It's an amateur box club. 
Yeah. St. Teresa's. It's a non-profit organization. Nobody makes money out of it. The coaches are completely voluntary. Um, so we're still basically looking for a pre- full-time premises. And uh, mm-hmm. hopefully now something comes, but like, it's not looking good, to be honest with you. And, and like, obviously, we, you know, a, a, a place that's so so rich and obviously history and boxing, but, you know, like if Katie Taylor was was to say, say they drive down the street and Bray today, everybody will stop her for a photograph, but nobody's looking for the next generation to bring, you know, because boxing's been prov- proven for years and years of, of what it can do for people, you know, they're, they're, you know, people that's come into the sport, amateur, pro boxing, it's teaching them good things. It can teach kids self-defense and stuff as well and the mental aspects. So, um, like if Katie, was to, if Katie was to fight in Bray, all the local politicians and everybody else would want tickets there and they want it for free. So they need to do what they can. They bring the next Katie Taylor on or the next Eddie Tracy or the next Regan Buckley. You know, they need to bring, they need to wise up pretty much and get you sorted. 100 Hundred percent. You should be investing, especially boxing, like because boxing is Ireland's best Olympic sport, most successful. Like, so mm-hmm. you should be investing, especially like in the small clubs. I know they do probably not in, not in um Brian, not air club. We have the council, like, and the local councillors. Just there's plenty of places around Bray. Like, you don't need a big place for a boxing club. In for you don't need a bit of floor space, a, a ring, and a few bags to hang in the wall. There's plenty of places around. Bray's a big town, but they don't seem to want to help. And like you said, you should be pushing for the there's cracking boxers around Bray, the young mm-hmm. boxers coming through the ranks. Um, but they need to be investing because if you don't invest, the young lads are you have no club. Like we've lost a few young lads out of our club because we're training in the in the local park. And you can't blame them for not wanting to go out go train in the rain in the local park. So we've lost a couple of young lads. Um but what could have been of them, we don't know, but sure. No one wants to help us, and it's one no of them things. Like it, you, you take away something that they love to do, and then you know the sad thing is they'll end up going to drink or drugs or you know or, or, or crime in some way, you know, because they just don't know what to do with themselves anymore. So you know, I really hope you know that someone obviously listening to the interview or someone in some way can help um, to get Absolutely. you started by premise. Because in the, the day, you know, if somebody wants to be a boxer, they don't want to stay out in the rain and and have nothing to train with. You know, it's like, it's like I'm trying to think of another inspirational quote here, Eddie. It's, it's just not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, like you said, the saddest thing in life is waste of talent. So, it's a uh, teaching young lads discipline, giving them something to do, giving them purpose. But you need someone to step up. You need someone to say, "Look, this this is your premises now. Like you can have it as your club." But we need something badly, and uh, the club will fall. The club is basically gone. Our club was. It's not far off now, but being gone, but I don't know how my coach Mark is still keeping the the things going, you know, but uh, he needs help. We, well, we, we need help big time. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, to say, if anybody can sort of reach out to Katie, I'm sure if she puts out one post, you know, probably someday I'll put a ribbon around some premise for you yeah. and say, there you go. There you go, 100%, yeah, absolutely. You know, so definitely, um, hopefully in some way I can help. Um Obviously, the as I say the whole potentially the whole thought of obviously fighting again now at the, the end of November would be nice to finish off the year after being out of the ring for so long and having two fights close by back to back. Hundred percent, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had a few days off, um, back into camp Monday, hoping that I'm going to be on the, the card in Dublin. So, um, and like I said, nice to get one before the year, and then you can relax. Then he's off the throttle a bit for uh, December, you know. So hopefully now all going well and um, the show gets over the line because I know you can only imagine how difficult it is to run a show like I know the the one in Belfast was uh, proven very difficult like I believe I was the last person to be matched mm-hmm. I got a call saying I had my opponent I think it was a week or so before the show saying I was matched everything was all good and I think on the Wednesday or the, the, the Tuesday or the Wednesday my opponent was gone so I had, had to get a new one but I think he only got a new opponent literally on the, the Thursday the Wednesday or the Thursday mm-hmm. so um, the show I think the whole show was apparently about to be pulled but you can only imagine how difficult it is and stressful it is on the lads but fair play to them, Leonard Stephen and Dennis keeping the things going keeping the, the show going you know but you can only imagine how difficult it is for them so hats off to the lads and uh, big respect for keeping boxing going in Ireland you know 
Definitely as in what, what a night it was as well. Um, so sort of I want to touch on the, the obviously the news a few months ago, the Box Netherlands obviously linked up with Kevin Marie. Um, there's probably going to be more opportunities there for you to not obviously just have Irish fighters because I'm sure you probably get to the stage now where you're going, stop asking me about Graham, stop asking me about Dominic. You know, th- there's maybe somebody in, in England or Scotland or Wales that could be linked up through Kevin Marie's stable now. So maybe it gives you a, another focus to look at someone and go, I can fight you for a Celtic title or, you know, like a BUA, Cel- sorry, British Boxing Board Celtic yeah. title and things like that and other belts and, you know, maybe potentially going in away as an away fight or somewhere for one of the European trinkets or things like that. See, that's the thing. Like, I'm sure every fighter has, like, their, their plan in place, like, what they, what they want to achieve or, or where they want to go. And it's all about timing. So, like, if I'm... Well, I want the Celtic title next because, like, I'm mandatory for it. So I'd like mm. to get that one next. Obviously, you can't look past one fight. So one fight at a time for me. I never look past any fight. But obviously, with them type of fights, like, it get what you're what you're planning to get and then jump into them fights then but it's all about timing like everything has to work out like to to uh, I know you have to take risks as well but one fight at a time but obviously with that link up um, the opportunities are going to be there so we, if the opportunities are there and the timing is right you'll take them no better because I'll fight anyone like, and I don't really like saying all the time like sure you know, people are sick of listening to me saying at this time I mean, who's this dickhead saying he's going to fight everyone again you know but <laughs> I don't really like to repeat myself, but uh, you know, we'll have to get some new names for you. To, have to get some new names for you to speak about. So I have to do a bit of research and see who's under Kevin Marie's stable at one fifty four and see if you can call them out. Yeah, one fifty four, one sixty, one six eight, whatever way you want to. <laughs> well, if you're to fight at one six eight, you might need a bit, a wee, a few more cookies. Yeah, hundred percent. That's not a problem, Stephen. That can be arranged very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> get the lorry load to eat them now. Um, yeah. But obviously, I want to, want to thank you for um, catching up with us again. Um, I know, obviously, we got a, a long overdue catch-up last week in, in Belfast, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be returning the favour next month in in, in Dublin, um, all being well. Um, but as I said, it's, it's great to get another catch-up with you. Obviously, when we do chat, we always have a laugh and a joke with things, and you know, we don't take life too seriously with things, but um, I'm sure we'll hopefully hear some good news for you soon, Eddie. 100% Stephen and I'm going to just give a quick mention as well to my sponsors because yeah. with COVID like, people don't understand like the cost involved in boxing like, like I s- explained this to you before in the last interview people think that you're a pro boxer you're getting paid thousands to fight it doesn't work like that like I don't really like getting into it like, but it doesn't work like that at all you have to pay your show costs if you're fighting a journeyman you have to pay his costs as well people don't think that they think that's uh, true but that's what happens through ticket mm-hmm. sales but with the limited capacity we were um Shorts, obviously, you've only so many tickets because I sort of costs are going to you're still going to be short cost. So, without the sponsors, this camp I simply wouldn't have been able to fight. So, I was like to give a quick mention to uh, my sponsors HD Hair Design, U Value Spray Foam Solutions, uh, O'Keefe Paving Landscaping, uh, Upholstery Designs, and a new um, uh, sponsor to come on at the middle of camp to help me drop the weight big time was Modern uh, uh, Quality Nutrition. Sort out my meals for camp. So, uh, big thank you to them. I wouldn't have been able to fight without them. So, fantastic. And to yourself as well, much appreciated for your uh, all your time you give us boxers. Like I said, if we, we didn't have these interviews to put out, we uh, are the platform that you're giving us, it'd be a lot harder to promote ourselves. So, much appreciated to you giving all your time. I know you're getting on now, but only a hobby. And uh, big thank you to yourself. Not a problem here. And I didn't even have to give you any money for doing that either, too. Oh, no, look, I'm just a nice guy, I know <laughs> Or do you want a free T-shirt down with a new T-shirt out? I know you bought the last one. I'm maybe send you, send you a T-shirt down. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I know you bought the blue one. I've got the black and gold one out now. I'll maybe get you one sent down the post. How long oh, does it know, take to post from one. Belfast to Bray? Uh, not too sure. Is on the, where, where are we on the same one? SB Sports, is it? No, I think they're just doing a. I think it's just for me ordering, but I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you one sent down the post as a as a thank oh, you, as a bribe for for saying nice things about I'm me. Saying that, yeah. Can you call me to say that, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Flattery gets you everywhere, isn't that what they say? <laughs> that's it, boy. That's it. <laughs> it definitely is. But look, it's been great having a catch up with you again. Obviously, um, enjoy obviously your weekend if you're going to be picking out or whatever you do. Obviously, I know we've 
I know we've, re- we've recorded this on a Friday evening. It's come out tomorrow on Saturday during today, or obviously today if people's listening to it. But a great yeah. night of box on, so maybe a few beer, a Chinese, and then back in the camp on Monday. Just grow, boy. No, no interest in beer anymore. So it's just grow for me. Nice Chinese or something, maybe. And then uh, back at Eden Lettuce, uh, rabbit field on Monday. So all good, man. <laughs> Definitely. Well, it was great catching up with you, and I'm sure we'll catch up again soon. 100%, Steve. Thanks for your time, yeah, boy. Really. Much appreciated. Take care. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.